You're listening to the Talk It Up radio show. Join us for the next hour for a fun-packed, educational, and inspirational moment. You know that the ice cream scoop has the power to make a child smile, and that by slowing us down, the traffic light can keep us going. You know that the golf tee brings friends together, that the mailbox keeps them connected. You know that the cataract laser helps you look to the future, while the pacemaker ensures that there's a future to be seen. You know that the lawnmower, the clothes dryer, and the elevator make life easier. That the blood bank makes life possible. You know that these things we count on every day started as ideas. But did you know all these ideas came from the minds of African Americans? Support minority education today so we don't miss out on the next big idea tomorrow. The United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Please visit uncf.org or call 1-800-332-UNCF. Brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Carlene Davis, and you're listening to Noel and Beverly Martin. Now don't you touch that dial. We're praising God all the time. Yeah, Jesus says so. Welcome to the Talk Talk Radio Show. This is a very, very, very special, maybe one of the most special shows we've ever done. Um... It's our last show on the air, and also we're saying goodbye to a dear friend. Um, I want to open the show with a quote um, by Demostier. It says, the remembrance of the good done those we have loved is the only consolation when we have lost them. The remembrance of the good done those we have loved is the only consolation when we have lost him. Brian, you're my brethren. I have to talk patwa so I don't cry, okay? <laughs> I have to lighten up the cell. Um, we have no music to play. We don't plan on playing any. Today is on the Veterans Corner. Um, so we're going to do that for the first 30 minutes of the show. Um, Sister Dahlia is on the West Coast, and also both our guests will be ca- calling in. Um, Mr. Alexa Braswell and also Dahlia S.P. Jones, retired. Um, Mr. Braswell is still actively working with the military as a volunteer, and when they call in, um, we will talk a little bit more. But uh, we want to say that. Um, Honey, your brand's picture for the, for the video? It's up. It's up, okay. So we're going to take a moment of silence. Give me time to recompose. And just a moment of silence for our brethren who has passed. And as we were talking about on um, Sophie's Back to Basic and Brian show. Uh, this is going to be one of those times when, uh, you know what? Um, let me hope my caller is here. Are you there, Dahlia? I am here. All right. You, I, I know you're on the West Coast somewhere, but I'm not quite sure where. So thank you so much for calling in, um, taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know that you're all... You're almost, you're almost like Carmen O'Brien. We say, where in the world is Carmen O'Brien? <laughs> where in the world is Dilly? <laughs> is retired. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to turn it over to you. Um, we're going to do a 30 minute for the Veterans Corner, and then we're going to do the other 30 minutes with um, Brian. And um, just our saying goodbye um, to our audience. Um, and the, also, okay. we have three phone lines. Um, so... Mr. Braswell can call in also, and we'll be able to um, patch you both. Uh, yeah, I do. He was he will be calling in um, shortly. But um, to start out with, um, you know, good evening, listening audience. I am yours truly, First Sergeant Dahlia S. Butte Jones, United States Army, retired. I am a combat decorated veteran who humbly um, served. 22 years, been retired 15 and a half years, 
And I am so grateful for the opportunity to be the voice on veterans advocacy, and especially in this capacity in Veterans Corner. And I thank um, you both for giving us, you know, this opportunity. And it is not goodbye, it's see you later, because um, I'm sure you will still be around to, um, to provide and assist as you have always you know, done, and I thank you so much for your assistance and for your um, your encouragement on this platform. And I also wanted to say belated Merry Christmas to everyone, and I look forward to a wonder, wonderful new year. As you stated in the opening, you know, today's show, we're going to decorate the, sh I mean, dedicate the show to, um, well, we're always talking about active duty service members, you know, veterans and their families, but today in particular, we're just going to dedicate the show to those who have fallen, both military and civilian, yes. because for those of you who have been listening to the show over the past week or so know that one of our very own, um, Brian, uh, passed away, yes. and I think it would be a travesty if I did not close out the year in recognize, recognizing such an icon and you know, it's unfortunately, it's unfortunate for everyone that the world lost such a beautiful soul. And I give a big shout out to his sister, who I personally know, um, Sophia Green, and her, you know, the rest of the family, because I'm sure they are all going through a difficult, you know, time right now. Uh, no one knows their pain. We can only imagine. So I ask for everyone to please keep on sending prayers, you know, because of that thing that's called cancer, you know, took away such a beautiful soul who was only here with us for a short time. But the man upstairs have plans, and while we can't question his plans, we just have to say we'll see him you know, um, on the other side. Yeah. I, oh, I just want to say also that we do have another caller on the line holding. Go ahead, caller. It's Valley Mail. Yeah, is this um, uh, Mr. Braswell? This is Valley Braswell. How are you? All right. How are you doing? Welcome to the Talk to Radio Show. Also, we have um, your compadre on the other line, uh, <laughs> retired. Army, Delia Espute Jones. How's it going, Madam President? <laughs> so I'm so glad that um, Casa Braswell was able to um, to join us. But before we get into um, his role, I just want to share with everyone the reason why you know we do the show. Um, it is all about, you know, advocacy for the United States military. Uh, and Casa Braswell, I'm sure, will get into that because his role, you know, is very, very big, and um, he can talk more about that. But we just want people to recognize our active duty service members and um veterans and their families in the community, just to share, you know, um, what a major uh, set of contribu contributors these elite professionals are in, um, in our world. Every day, 24 hours a day, we have our men and women all around the world who wake up to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. So um, we're here to, you know, just pay homage and say thank you for what you do every day so that we can sleep peacefully. So with that being said, um, we'll, we're only going to take 30 minutes of our show today, and the rest will go on to um, the dedication of your work over the years. 
Noel and Beverly. And hi, Beverly. I know I haven't personally said hi since we started, but I thank you um, for being a big sister, you know, to me um, over these months. And again, um, I ask that you please, you know, continue um, to be a sounding board, um, you know, for us and with us. Sure. I certainly will, Dahlia. You haven't seen Thank the last you. of us yet. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. So we have um, a very special person on the show, and his name is Mr. Ali Braslow, United States Marine Corps veteran, and um, currently serving as the civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army here in um, Florida. And I wanted to give him the opportunity today for him to talk about, you know, uh, his uh, his career in um, the military and also what he has been doing over these past couple of years. Because, you know, we met some years ago and he went from a role of being in the Marines to now a veteran to um, being the ambassador for the United States Army Reserve, and now he's currently serving as the CASA. So, CASA Braswell, could you give us a snapshot of who you are? So the community, they see you on Facebook, but they really don't know that you have some power. <laughs> well, thanks, B And uh, Beverly Noel, it's a pleasure to join all of you tonight. And... Thank you for those wonderful words, D. Uh, I guess if I had to sum it up, I, I'm just a community servant, one that believes in this great country of ours, and especially the men and women who serve in our military. Uh, they are incredible uh, professionals, as you stated. And uh, through my 12 and a half years in the Marine Corps and being able to serve continuously as a, uh, a Marine Corps veteran, I'll always be a Marine. But, you know, I serve proudly as a civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, and our our Secretary, the Honorable uh, Mr. McCarthy, is just an incredible individual that believes in the diversity and the mosaic of, of our country. And uh, in this current role, I get to serve as an advisor to the Secretary. Um, it has all these crazy protocols with it, and, uh, you know, being able to understand that, uh, we've been able to do some incredible things, like host uh, nine general officers here to showcase the African heritage talent that are engaged in the leadership of our United States Army, to showcase it so that we can show that others who may not have a, uh, an understanding of how far you can go um, in the United States military, uh, as we hosted uh, General Garrett. Uh, he's a four-star general, and he is one, the... A uh, gentleman that commands over 80% of the United States Army uh, was here uh, because he wanted to showcase talent as an African American of what you can achieve. But at the same time, we had Brigadier General uh, Stephen Michael, and Brigadier Michael, Brigadier General Michael, is the first Guyanese general in the United States Army uh, of Guyanese yeah. heritage. And so. You know, I'll, I'll pause here in just a second, but, you know, my role is to continue to serve. I love being a United States Marine. Uh, there are several before me in my family. I'm number eight. Mm. And, uh, you know, our, our rich heritage of giving back to the nation continues with my son, who's uh, flying uh, drones in the United States Army now, a young 24-year-old out of Orlando, Wakiva High School, to go on and, and, and give back. So our family heritage is a, as, a, as a family of service to the nation, uh, service to this community as the civilian aid for our area, and uh, just very, very proud to serve. Dee. I hope that gives a good summary without talking too much. It, it, it really does because um, I think sometimes people only see, you know, folks in the uniform um, moving a, around and about, and or they may see a seasoned veteran with a hat on saying that they fought in Vietnam and World War II, but they really don't know the significance, and I think sometimes they're afraid to approach them to ask. So what did you contribute to the military, and, you know, and, and how can I assist? And that's the purpose of this forum, 
is to let people know that, you know, you don't have to be in the military or was a part of the military to be a veteran's advocate, but I also wanted them to know that there are people out there who are fighting every single day for veterans, you know, advocacy. So, Casa Braswell, you are definitely, you know, one of those individuals in our community, and I thank you for your support and your continued support. So I wanted also to ask you, what can we look forward to moving into 2020, you know, from um, the flagpole that you're currently representing? Well, I guess in, in 2020, it's an exciting year for the Army as uh, Secretary, Secretary McCarthy has really been about how to move our force forward. Uh, the key thing is we've increased our our enlistment goals as well as our goals for commissioning officers in the United States Army. And uh, as we move the mission forward, it's about putting uh, uh, feet in boots or troops on the line. And, you know, when you look at our, our United States Army currently, we have over 150 different MOSs that people can serve in. And that's from engineering to logistics to cyber command to um, infantry, because we need every single discipline in order to make this work. Uh, you know, a lot of people are under the belief that when you join the Army, the only thing you can do is carry a rifle and be shot at. But I would like to correct that by saying that only 8 to 10 percent of our current force are in combat arms or and in special forces. And so that means a myriad of 90% of our, our, our current army serves in other roles that support the ability to take the fight from where we need to, but at the same time to equip warriors. You're going to see a heavy uh, advertising campaign roll out that talks about the warrior. Then what type of warrior are you? And, uh, you know, what we're going to do is be able to showcase uh, the types of uh, things that our young people are doing to protect our nation. Uh, I'm very proud of my young son, who's a sergeant, uh, and will hopefully be commissioning in the near future. Uh, but he protects the nation by uh, flying a drone. And very funny, uh, years ago when he was a teenager, I used to tell him, you know, that joystick's not going to amount to anything. Well, uh, through a joystick and a set of complicated controls, he's able to protect our nation by making sure we have eyes on and protect our soldiers. And, you know, he constantly tells me that, you know, Start, it's about the men, and uh, he he doesn't realize uh, that I'm still dad. Sometimes I think he stands in position because of the CASA title. Uh, but, you know, what's important is we've got young men and women going to the United States Military Academy. Uh, in this coming year, we will again appoint young people for scholarships and, and to the academy. Uh, we'll continue to grow our Army and have it strengthened uh, so that can, we can take the fight where we need to. At the same time, though, you're talking about the fight moving to a different domain, into the cyber world. And so, you know, very heavily the United States Army is recruiting towards those types of careers, which are information technology, uh, cybersecurity type careers, uh, to help protect our nation from that threat. Overall, it's going to be an exciting year for 2020 here on our local footprint. Uh, we will have two four-star general officers visiting us in the first quarter again, to show their commitment to education. Uh, the head of the Training and Doctrine Command, uh, General Funk, is actually going to be coming here to spend time with Orange County and Osceola County schools to make sure that educators understand what we need uh, our students to be able to come prepared into the world to, whether they go civilian careers or they go military careers, to share what we're looking for. Uh, you, you have that very special surprise, and I won't steal that from you, D, of the other four-star general that will be coming here in our footprint. But, you know, there's a, a what the Army views Orlando as, a priority city. When you yeah. look at the recruiters and the young men and women here who are the boots on the ground making it happen, our young people over at the Orlando Recruiting Company or anywhere in our footprint that my voice can be heard, these are the young people out here with the tools to change people's lives for the better. And, you know, I'm not going to make, make light that you, we are not put in harm's way because we are. But these young men and women who choose to serve in that capacity 
allow us to be able to be on the radio here tonight, be able to walk the streets that we do, and be able to take advantage of the freedoms that are so uh, sacred in our country, because freedom isn't free. And But with these young recruiters, these people are out here doing it. I just want everybody in Orlando that's in hearing of my voice to know that the Gator Battalion and the Orlando Recruiting Company are the finished last year at the number two in the nation and are tracking very heavily to be number one in the nation in terms of providing the Army opportunity. So, D, that's a summary of what's going on, a lot of activity. Uh, but then, you know, the key is, I love what you said, continuing to serve our soldiers today because they will be our veterans tomorrow. Continuing exactly. to create pathways for our veterans so that they have ample opportunity so that when they do leave the active force as, and they become veterans, that they have access to everything that they are entitled to. Yes. What um, advice would you give to our civilian counterparts and even some of our, you know, veterans who really are not, you know, still attached like you and I are? What advice would you give them, you know, about supporting, you know, those who are still you know, serving and those who have served? Well, uh, two things. Uh, so for the civilian community, I would say, you know, if you can see a veteran, know a veteran, get to understand that veteran's story. Um, understand what that veteran served. I served as a uh, signals intelligence analyst, as a uh, cryptologic translator, um, you know, in the intel side. But get to know every veteran's story because these are some special people, and they come with some incredible talent to employers, hire veterans, employ veterans. They're some of the most loyal, on-time, respectful people and dedicated to your mission because that's what they've been doing when they were serving on active duty. To my veteran brothers and sisters is stay in the fight, stay engaged, uh, seek out the benefits that you're entitled to because of your service. Whether you've served one day to 32, 38 years, as some of my uh, colleagues have, uh, your, every day, every hour that you served entitles you to your education benefits, your health care benefits, your, your guarantee for loans, which open doors way and pathways to home ownership. Uh, seek out the opportunities that allow you to use your veteran preference to gain employment that allows you to take care of you and your family. And if, if I may, the, the most important things to my brothers and sisters who are veterans please seek out the mental health side of helping you deal with the challenges that you may come back here with. Uh, I, I will tell you, as a veteran, I go to my counselor. I seek out mental health counseling, and I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. I don't believe in a taboo that it says I'm weak because I do. I believe it says I'm strong because I admit where I need help in, and I go and seek out that help because uh, I don't know if our community knows, but we lose 22 veterans a day to suicide. And if yes. we can stop just one wow. of them every day, yeah. one of them by getting that veteran to that mental health counselor, encouraging them to continue to fight the good fight and, and fight for themselves, then we're making a difference. And indeed, that, I guess that's the biggest part of our message. My message is veterans count. Whether, and you know what? Veterans comes in all shapes, sizes, colors, hues, background, genders, orientation. If you served in our military, we should applaud you, and you should take advantage of every opportunity you have. Yes. And, you know, I, I, have, I, a, I have a question for uh, Mr. Braswell, because he does recruiting, right? Mr. Braswell? Yes, sir. You do recruiting also? I am not a recruiter. I okay. work very closely with the recruiting element at okay. the uh, CASA. My job is to help uh, bridge that community connection between our community and our recruiters so that they can effectively uh, recruit people into the Army. I got you. Because I had a question for you, if you were. I don't know if you may be able to answer it. But I'm just – something flashed across my mind when you're talking. Um, I see so many young teens or teens – walking around doing nothing on the streets. Um, are there any, like, qualifications that are required, age, education? Um, is anyone reaching out to these 
kids on the streets just walking, getting into trouble? Well, you know what? Yes, we are. And uh, that's a very good point, Noel. And let me, let me talk on that. Um, one of the biggest challenges to putting people into our United States military is they get in trouble before age 14. They have some type of arrest record or some type of run-in with law enforcement, and that can be a disqualifier from them getting in the military. Wow. Second, another major challenge is obesity. Uh, less than 20% of our kids that are graduating qualify to go in our United States military. They, they need to have a GED. They need to have a high school diploma. Uh, they need to be moving ahead. They need to be able to physically qualify. And so those are some of the things that run into trouble. So swimming upstream, I'd like to encourage young people and parents of young people who may be listening, continue to encourage them to stay out of trouble starting in third grade because what they do in middle school can't affect them. I had a young man that I had the privilege of nominating for a four-year Army scholarship a quarter million dollar scholarship. The Army will pay up to $250,000 for this young guy to go to school. I was there when you did that. And, uh, you know, you saw me present it to uh, little uh, Trene Smith, uh, a graduate of Evans High School. Yes. But there was a young man from Seminole High School that we nominated, and he was tracking very well towards his scholarship. But a blemish from his past, a prank that turned into an arrest record, that caused him to be charged with a felony, even though he was exonerated, the arrest caused him to lose the uh, eligibility for that $250,000 scholarship. Wow. Uh, Bell's mic yeah. was off. <laughs> yeah. She wanted to, you were saying so, something? Well, hopefully our young people are listening so they know if that's the direction you mm. want to head into, then make sure that you stay clean. And also, um, having been doing the Veterans Corner, I, I, we've learned so much from um, uh, Ms. Jones and um, Ms. Timms and all the other people who've come in that um, have opened up our minds to what is happening and can be um, a benefit to our youngsters with the career opportunities, the education, and just a plethora of stuff you know, for joining and um, education can go unlimited as far as I was told or I understand. Well, you know, and uh, I also want to take a minute to say that, you know, if you take a look at our, our contributions, our Caribbean community has really given a great deal to the United States military. Uh, when I was a young staff sergeant uh, thinking about commissioning, I had a major uh, walk over to me. He was our company commander and tell me, young man, you got great potential. What are you going to do with it? And uh, I never knew that Vince Stewart, Major Vince Stewart, would help change directions in my life with that simple conversation. Uh, mm. But he is a testimony. He's a KCO boy, graduate from Jamaica. Uh, he, he left there in his teens. But I'm just very proud of him, and I kind of want to salute him. I know he probably can't hear me, but maybe somebody will know him. But that's Lieutenant General Vincent Stewart, who went on to become the first man of color to head the Defense Intelligence Agency as the director. Wow. Then went on to be the Deputy Commanding General of Cyber Command. And he's a Jamaican uh, who served in our military that made a great difference, so... I really want to applaud the Caribbean members of our community who serve right alongside with African Americans and, and others. And because we're just one big diaspora, we come from different islands and different nations, but we can make a difference by giving back to each other. And the military is a great way to do that. Pave the way forward. Mm -hmm. uh, Noel, this is one of the best GI bills ever known to the history of the military to where You've served, you can get out and go to school, you can be paid while you go to school, and mm. your books be covered and your rent be covered, and, you know, for serving just as little as four right. years. Mm. So Mr. Braswell, I, want, opportunity out there. I have to take a quick, quick um, session break, and then I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. You're listening to 1680 WOKB AM, Winter Garden, Florida. As I promised, it was quick. Folks, you're listening to the Talk Radio Show on the WKB radio station. 
And uh, if you want to participate, um, ask one of our online guests um, a question or share some thoughts. 407-894-1680. 407-894-1680. All right. And on the phone, we have um, our two people who are retired from the military. Um, Dahlia. Dayla, S.P.U. Jones, and um, Mr. Braswell. And I'm going to turn it back over to our guest. My wife is correcting me, um, I think. <laughs> I, I do have um, something to add to what um, Casa Braswell just said in reference to, um, I think you said his name was General Stewart, a Jamaican, and he was a major contributor to your success in the military. Um, I'm glad you mentioned him because we're looking for people of his caliber with his um, background and connection to the community because um, one of the initiatives that I'm working on for 2020 is recognition of our Caribbean Americans who proudly served in the United States military and also to recognize um, those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice and there is a there is wheel there are wheels in motion for this um initiative to take place um within between 2020 and 2021 uh, recently i was in jamaica and i met with some um, key personnel at the Jamaica Defense Force, and there will be more meetings and more um, teleconference to talk about how we're going to actually do these recognitions um, here in the United States and also, you know, um, for those that we're recognizing in uh, Jamaica. And um, Casa Braswell, I would welcome your assistance in that area with um, all that, all and everyone that you know that may be able to play a key role in us executing something as significant as this. Well, Dee, you got my, my pleasure support and, and, and my willingness to do whatever we need to because I think that every American, especially given the current national narrative, that every American, every immigrant that has served in our military should be applauded for that service. And we need to recognize that where the national narrative may not say that, I have proudly served with people from all backgrounds and uh, will gladly do it again. And, you know, if I can be of any help to you in that effort, you you just call. Thank you. I, um, I also wanted to uh, make everyone aware of um, one major event that's coming up in February, and that is on the 21st of February, where General Michael X. Garrett will be coming back to Orlando. And um, they can call me at 407-924-0810 for more information. But we need to come out and support, you know, um, my uh, General Garrett coming back to the community. This is not only an African-American soldier, but this is a soldier, you know, for life. As Mr. Roswell stated earlier, this is a man who is in charge of 80% of the Army's um, assets to include, you know, personnel. So he has taken the time to come down to Orlando, and I think that uh, we should pay respect and come out and listen to him. He will be at the Holiday Inn which is located at 1724 North Alafaya Trail, Orlando. And again, that is on the 21st of February at 11.30 to 1 p.m. Now, I'll say he is an Army general. However, he's the general for all. Um, our program, our events are not only for the Army. We're all team, one fight. We're all serving for the same cause. So while it may be led by an Army organization, we're also here to support all five branches of, um, of the services. 
and I'll also put out just some general information to our um, listening audience. If you know of a veteran and or someone, a veteran especially, who has served, um, effective 1 January, if they are receiving any kind of military benefits and they do have a VA ID card, they will be able to utilize the local um, post exchange or base exchange or the Navy exchange and commissary. But they have to have um, their ID card showing they do have a veteran preference. Now, I've been reading online where some people are asking about OCONA, meaning overseas. I'm not really too sure of that. But if they're located overseas or you know the family member is located overseas, just ask them to go into their local customs office overseas and they will be able to tell them whether or not they can use those privileges. Because even though they are a veteran, um, the SOFA, which is the standard, um, the, the standard, or, um, oh, excuse me right now, I don't know why, but it's called a SOFA agreement and that's what governs us overseas it is called the status of forces agreement i'm sorry status of forces agreement and that's what governs us overseas so it's a little bit different from being here in the states but it's worth a try it's worth looking into because i know a lot of people love going to shopping and you know at the military um exchanges because things are cheaper and you do not pay taxes now i know um noelle had said earlier that he's going to take the last 30 minutes so no will, don't uh, go on don't 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 stop i mean <laughs> if you have a good point going there don't um we're flexible okay well I, I will make sure that you you do get um your time so we'll only take a a couple you know more minutes to say again the purpose of this program is not only for the army it's not only for the air force it's not only for the marines it's not only for the coast guard and it's, you know, it's not only just for one individual branch of service. It is for all the branches, and it is also for anyone who shares an interest in providing support to our active duty service members, veterans, and their families in the community. You know, it is a program where you can call in to ask questions. I am not the subject matter expert, however, I belong in a community where I am linked in, tied in to those individuals who are the subject matter experts, and we can get your questions answered to those. Because what I find out is that there's, there's so many people within our community that have no clue of what benefits and or, you know, what activities are going on in the community in support of the military and i'm here to tell you that um i think it would be a great idea for everyone to get engaged and get involved and if you just want to support any military organization as long as they're legit you know please reach out to us we'll provide you the information because there are a slew of organizations out there who support the military whether it's financially whether it's for mental health whether it's for, you know, medical, um, there are so many. As the, the lead, I should say, to several veteran organizations, one being the Orange County Mayor's Veterans Advisory Council, where I serve as the chair under none other than Sheriff um, Demings. This is an organization for the county that provides we're a conduit to the community for anything veteran, you know, related. And I welcome anyone and everyone who would like to be a part of that team. We meet every third Wednesday downtown at the Orange County building in room 105. The Orange County building is located at 201 North Roslyn. And we would love for you to come on out and join in. The year 2020, we will be ramping up, doing more in the community, 
And let me tell you, 2019 was a very, very productive he productive year. And I am super, super excited that 2020 will be even better. The mayor is very, very supportive of our programs and what we're doing for veterans. And he encouraged any and everyone within the county or surrounding com com you know, counties to join in and, um, and assist. I would like to thank all of our units, all the green suitors, meaning people who are still in uniform in the community, who are grinding every day. I'm talking about the soldiers who are assigned to the 143rd um, ESC, the National Guard units, the recruiters who are out there every day looking for those war fighters who are our future. I commend them. So, you know, they are assigned to the Orlando Recruiting Company, which is what Mr. Braswell was speaking about, you know, earlier. If you see them, please support them. Please support them. They are only there to provide the best to, you know, the Army. You also have the UCF ROTC program. Those cadets are our future leaders. My organization, AUSA Sunshine Chapter, supports and sponsors these great, you know, young professionals, and we're asking the community, you know, to do the same. We have several key leaders in the community, from the Orange County Sheriff, who is an Army veteran, Sheriff John Meaner, who supports our community wholeheartedly. We have... Um, in Osceola County, um, Sheriff Russ Gibson, who supports, you know, um, the community uh, wholeheartedly. And, you know, we also have, you know, Casa Braswell, who is on the phone, who definitely go above and beyond and support the community. As we stated before, he is not only a United States um, Marine Corps veteran, Marine Corps for life, but he also supports, you know, um, recruiters, veterans. I mean, he's always out there grinding. So I felt today, what better way, um, you know, it would be for us to have him come in and talk about what he does in the, in the community. Um, I know that a lot of our community members sometimes feel afraid and or they don't know what's out there for them. But just remember, that's what we do. You know, 90% of us, we are not paid to do what we do, but we do it because we love it. I personally, I'm a soldier for life. You know, after serving 22 years, this is a way of paying it forward. This is a way of giving back. So I know I've said a lot. And again, I just wanna thank WOKB for a wonderful year. And I look forward to coming back the fourth Sunday of January. And, again, I thank you, and I love you guys. <laughs> um, Mr. Braswell? Uh, well, I want to yes. thank you, too, um, Dahlia. Before um, Mr. Braswell speaks, um, you have done a wonderful job over the past year sharing information to our veterans, and I'm sure there are a lot of people who did not know um, all the benefits and the um, different things that were available to them. So I want to thank you for that. Um, we will continue to support you, and we may surprise you at the ball next year. <laughs> we haven't come. I think you're going to be. I think you're going to be there. Yes, <laughs> I'm claiming it. <laughs> Let's be positive. We're going to be there. Do I need to buy a tux, yeah. or can I just paint one? It's going to be Noel's big big birthday, so. <laughs> Oh yeah, six a five. Birthday. Six five. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll definitely talk about you know what you should wear. Yes. Just promise me that you will come and we can talk about the outfit later. Yes, we'll be there. Yeah. yeah. As long as we keep talking, it will happen. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, been, it's been it's been it's been a good um experience um having you um share the veteran corner with our audience. Yes. Um, you have made us aware of things that we didn't know that we took for granted too mm -hmm. and um yeah we look forward to working with you guys in the future we don't know in what capacity 
But um, we are going to take the Talk Up Radio Show off the air for a while. Um, Beverly and I are going to take about a year or so off and get caught up on some stuff, um, do some traveling, um, stuff like that. And we just want to be free to visit the grandkids. They're all over Miami, Fort Lauderdale. And just take some time to enjoy ourselves. <laughs> and yes. I think Yes. I, I also need to make sure that um, because Marsha is not on, not on the program today, that does not mean she is not a part of the program. She's sure. actually in, in flight. So mm-hmm. she was in California, and I was, uh, you know, I'm still in Seattle. I'll be flying back on the red eye tonight. But um, we're still a team, and mm-hmm. we're still going to be tag teaming for 2020. Mm-hmm. Good job. Awesome. And Mr. Braswell, wanted to say a few words to end? Well, I just want to thank all of you for the program because it it enriches our community. And I'm honored to have been a guest. And, Dee, thank you so much for the kind words. And we'll uh, continue to be supportive and make a difference with our community, Mm -hmm. especially our veterans community. And if I could just give a word, a shout-out to the veterans to say, uh, if you are a veteran who has served in any of our, our branches of our armed forces, please tell somebody because we have a generation now that don't have the connectivity to our military and our military story except through you. And I would ask that veterans would take time out and share their stories. And thank you, Noel, Barbara, and and uh, I'm sorry, Beverly. Oh, and, you <laughs> caught yourself. I was say, Who's Barbara? <laughs> no, uh, uh, Forgive me, that's, that's the head, not the heart. Uh, <laughs> and, and Good one. For, uh, for, for having this program because, you know, uh, I've listened for years, but I will tell you, if you can't find two finer people that believe in Orlando and our community, especially our Caribbean community, than the two of you, and you can't find a more, more powerful veterans advocate than indeed, and the combination of you all coming together makes a difference. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of a grateful community. Thank you so much. We were honored to be a part of it. All righty. Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys be safe out there. Thank you. you. All right. Alrighty. God bless you all. Yep. In 2020. Yes. yes. Happy thank New you. Year. God bless. God bless you. Folks, coming up next is the Jamming Radio Show. Countryman is here. I see his lights flashing there. It's a pretty fancy computer. <laughs> what go on, my brother? <laughs> yeah. Um, we just want to say, I mean, this is our final goodbye. Um, last week we tried, and uh, then we found out that this week we're going to be here again because one of my grandsons is out of town, so we're going to go to him this week. He won't be back till next year. So that left us open to be here and also we we experienced something on thursday night which really was unique um and it was something that was to honor our dear brother brian who passed away and um it 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 really was touching um to listen to uh, a restaurant full of people, not just a room, a restaurant full of people. Mm-hmm. They, the restaurant was closed, okay? And I want to say, I don't know what words I can use to Sophie and, um, I miss his name now, my brethren. Bri- not Brian, Sophie and, uh, Taste of Jamaica. Mark and, Mar- Sophie. Mark. Mark and Sophie. Mark and Sophie. I've known them from way back, <laughs> maybe 20 years, and <laughs> my memory is gone. Well, anyway, forget about me. And it, it was really, truly, I, Bev and I were honored, really, to be part of the, um, that experience. Um, and I didn't even know Brian played domino. <laughs> and that was play domino. He was... He could give a six love. Yeah. A he could give but <laughs> couldn't take. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, um, it was good. It was an informal envi- uh, environment, and we all chatted. Um, they... Um, it was really, really a good experience. Mm. Um, it's n- it's easier to talk about Brian than to talk about leaving the air. <laughs> so mm-hmm. spend more time about that. that. Um, well, we're still going to be involved in yeah. the community, as Noah said. We're just taking a break. Um, 
to yeah. work on some things that we need to work on. Is that on. what they call a hiatus? Yes, we're not yeah. getting any younger, yeah. so there are some things that we need to focus on for 2020. I'd like so you to put my big 65 out there, though. <laughs> <laughs> we have some um, new goals it, that we're yeah. we want to accomplish. Yeah. So we ask you listeners, we thank you so much for your support over yeah. the last five years. And five we and ask a half. Yes, and we ask you to continue to um, pray for us that you know, we, we will walk in the right direction that we're meant to go in. Yeah. Nobody knows how much time we have left. Our dear brother um, left his life at such a young age. Right. So it's very important that we focus on the priorities and make the main thing be the main thing. Yeah. So I want to thank you all. And, 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 and uh, you're right, baby. Family. Yes. Family, 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 family. Family is the main thing, yes. So family, I, I, I know. To make sure we're spending enough time. I know, time. um... There are times when the relationships in the family are not the best, mm -hmm. but um, take the time to to mend those. It or time is short. Mm -hmm. The time is short, and we, we don't know when. So don't put off what you can do today or tomorrow. Just don't do that. Right. Um, I I can't tell you how much is. It was a pleasure having my youngest grandson with us um, the four days before Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know, and it. it reignites some of the things you learned um, when you were a kid or you're doing as a kid you know and um we we just want to say good night um goodbye um <laughs> And See Countryman you said, oh, what you talking about? Good night too. Yeah. <laughs> Good night too. <laughs> we'll be here every now and Countryman, then, Countryman. We'll, Countryman we'll has my own. <laughs> he has some uh, an, uh, staple and still my shoes to the floor <laughs> back here. <laughs> He's holding on to my car keys. Yeah. Um, folks, it was a pleasure. Um, we do have um, quite a bit of our shows recorded on YouTube and Facebook. Um, information there is out there forever. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to today's technology. And it costs you nothing. It's not a podcast. Uh, you know, just enjoy enjoy yourselves. We want to thank Shante, uh, Glenn, uh, Ms. Drina, Chris, and um, what's the guy, Rich, one of the technical sound? Rich, Richard, Rob. You're on the ear, aren't you? He does the technical <laughs> sound. I, I know I'm on the ear, but I mean, I'm <laughs> <laughs> but the entire staff of the WOKB, um, you know, I remember when we just started over there in John Young, we were pushing green button when we should be pushing red button. And um, it was a learning curve. We've come a long way. We've come a long way. Mm -hmm. We still make mistakes. Uh, not because we're human, because my head is tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so. But um, I, I had a, sh a song lined up, but um, I really don't feel like playing a song right now. Just going to just ad lib it. Countryman, you can you can save save me save the day anytime with some for your. <laughs> well, we just want to say also, um, as uh, Sophie announced on the Back to Basic show, um, for those of you who love Brian and uh, you know you, he also shared some things on our show as well. So I just want to share with you that uh, the funeral arrangements have been set. It's going to be at um, the Mount Sinai Seven Day Adventist Church on Sunday, January twelfth. And this will be at 11 a.m. for anyone who would like to pay their respect. The repast will also follow that as well. Um, the, day the, the day before that, on the 11th, there will be a domino get-together at the Taste of Jamaica restaurant on OBT. And this is going to be at 7 p.m., January 11th. There will be great domino games and uh, Jamaican food, great Jamaican food and great music. So, uh, you know, if Brian meant something to you, which I'm sure he did, um, come on out and let's give him a good home going. I think one of the things he requested was he wanted it to be a festival occasion. No crying. No, no. It's it hard for us, Brian. I'm sorry. Listen, Brian, you can't take that from me, <laughs> I'm right? I'm sorry. We <laughs> miss you. We <laughs> miss know, you so I know much. I know one of the Jamaican artists who said big man to cry, right? Yes. <laughs> it's but it's um, hard not to. But it's not. we're not crying yeah. because um, we're, we're thankful that he's no longer suffering. Mm -hmm. And for that, we are grateful. But, but we're crying we for the loss. We just miss his presence. Miss his presence. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You know? Um, Brian <laughs> and Sophie... They c they come on from five to six, right? And then we go to six or seven. And when we go outside the door, they're still we in conversation. Family, yes, they're, <laughs> they're still out there discussing stuff. I'm expecting to walk out now and I see know. them out there. It's like part two of the Back to Basic show out in yes. the parking lot. <laughs> 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 you know? we, 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 I, we learn a lot. Um, we listen to the show coming in, and then we do our show, and we listen to the, back, the Countryman show on the way out. Um, Saturdays, Saturdays, 
a really nice, nice, you know. Um, nice family time. It's a nice family. Mm -hmm. um, that we've, we've grown to be part of their family here. Mm -hmm. And um, like Beverly said, we're not going away. We're just taking a little time off. Yeah. A little uh, time we off. Yeah, we can yes. work with that. Oh, so you do talk. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. It's Barry, 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 um, Barry White voice. Oh, Barry. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, man, yeah, man, listen, man. Sorry, I missed your thing last night, uh, last week. No, we were, no, we were, no, we were no, out. No, we were, no, we were no, out, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, we're just sadly being two big man talking while well, honestly are two thousand people listening. <laughs> you know. Um I wanna um welcome um Carter and Megan. Um they took the time to come over here and spend the last show with us. Yeah, he Carter, Carter Carter says you're a good man. Can you name Carter? <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. You're live now, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. That's <laughs> all you're going to say? To, 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 to <laughs> <laughs> and I must say, both of them are doing very well in college. Yes. So, um, young people, um, please uh, keep, it, keep your focus so you can get through your higher education and you end up getting a good job. Stay in school. Stay in school. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, and Carter. And keep, keep your, keep like um, Mr. Braswell said, don't get in trouble. Yes. 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 Don't get in trouble. Um, don't get no record don't be what they call it juvie yes yeah, you know juvie. some people take it you as a as like a forces. like a holiday to go to jail mm -hmm. but they, they don't don't realize what they're doing to their um future mm -hmm. you know um basically um young people need to think about the long term think about their future yeah. how it's affecting their behavior how is yeah. that going to affect them long term but they need so. they need they need people to guide them though yes. you know if 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 if, we, if they don't have that guidance from the family the village they the parents the village, yeah. then they're going to fail mm -hmm. then they're going to mm -hmm. fail you know That's sometimes true. when you wake up it's too late yes you know look this kid got a quarter million dollar grant and couldn't 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 um, uh, he lost it because of a little blotch on his record right you know right. so the things that we do do affect us yes it really does yeah. affect us so we want to say again to our listeners thank you it's been a great five years um we will pop in every now and then yeah. you'll hear us um come in we'll surprise countrymen sometimes yeah. <laughs> and come in so thank you once again for a great five years thank you to shante and the staff at wokb for supporting us and um as we remember brian um we just want to say you know everyone just keep keep loving each other forgive each other and um try to live your lives the best you can have a good evening this has been the talk it up radio show god bless you all saying goodbye for a while <laughs> Nobody can talk like me. <laughs> <laughs>